are not targeting opposition activists. I have a duty to deliver development to this country. I pay attention to that. So little braggarts who make noise on the social media never attract my attention. Sierra Leone's President Julius Madabio speaks exclusively to the BBC days after protest over economic hardships resulted in 25 deaths. And in sport, the countdown is on. Just a day to go before the highly anticipated heavyweight boxing rematch between world champion Alexander Yuzik and Anthony Joshua in Saudi Arabia. Thanks for joining us here on Focus on Africa from BBC World News. In a moment, we'll bring you an exclusive interview with President Julius Marabio of Sierra Leone. To Sierra Leone now, where President Julius Marabio says anyone found culpable in the deaths of protesters or police officers during last week's violent protest will face justice. The demonstrations over the rising cost of living resulted in 25 deaths. President Bio accuses the opposition of trying to topple his government, an accusation the opposition have rejected. The BBC's Thomas Nadi asked President Bio about the accusations of human rights abuses against his government. I, none of that has reached me. Uh, we have, as a matter of fact, uh, been very, very uh, conscious of our obligations, international obligations, human rights is one, and um, we have protected, provided protection for everybody in this country. The rights of people should be, should be the respected. Hassan Domboya, known as Evangelist Samson, was killed, and some people have suggested that uh, it looks like you are going after your perceived enemies. I have um, a duty to provide security for this country. And um, I pay attention to that. I have a duty to deliver development to this country. I pay attention to that. So little braggarts who make noise on the social media are never, my, uh, never attract my attention. I only came to know about evangelist uh, something. something now. So uh, I cannot say he's, a, he, he's, he's an opponent, as a matter of fact. Um, what about the killings? The Police have been conducting raids and there are reports of killings. All the others have been arrested. They are, in, they, they, they are being investigated. None of them were killed. In his case, I had, there was an exchange of gun, gunfire and uh, it was in that process that uh, he, 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 he sustained injuries that uh, led to him bleeding to death. We are also reliably informed that he, he wasn't even closer to the scene of the incident. I wasn't there. I'm getting reports, and you are also uh, uh, reporting. I am. I was not an eyewitness. Now, can I give you a first-hand information? That's why I did not even want to delve into that because the matter is being investigated, and I wouldn't want to make any categorical statements at this point. Our sources have told us that uh, you were given 48 hours to return to this country, or else the military was going to take over, and. After your speech, some senior officers were replaced and others retired. Was that the reason why you took that action? Nobody gave me an ultimatum. Our heads of uh, security institutions can be removed for different reasons. And I did that at this point in time. What are the reasons? Well, it is my right when I think it is right. You think the timing was right? That is my determination, not yours. We've spoken to people and they've said that it's because of economic hardship that prompted them or that propelled them to uh, go out on the streets to demonstrate. And what are you doing to address economic hardships in this country? With the prices of things just going up, I cannot protect the people of this country. The only way I can do what I can do is to make sure that we cushion the effect of what is happening elsewhere so that it does not negatively impact. And what have you done to cushion people. the effects? What have I done? We have removed or we have waived completely 
like on rice, which is a staple food, completely every tax or duty on, 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 on that one, rice in particular. So we don't earn anything as a state from that one. Uh, cooking gas, from 5% to zero, completely, we have taken that off. We have provided uh, over $50 million, which is uh, an equivalent of about 50 billion, uh, 500 billion dions, in terms of facilities to support, uh, through the, the central bank, to support uh, um, importers so that they can provide all essential commodities. We, except for a very short time when we had um, a shortage of uh, fuel, all essential commodities have been available since uh, the pandemic. Fuel prices are going up and people are complaining. If you can produce fuel and give it to me cheaply, I will give it to my people very cheaply. But I don't produce fuel. I cannot get it freely for the people of Sierra Leone. So what we have done is to make sure that it is available. But the problem is that it's not actually trickling down to ordinary Sierra Leoneans. Transport fares remain the same. We cannot have lower prices in this, at this time of the world. It's not anywhere in the UK. Go to the shelves. What you used to buy at 40 is now 100 or more. I was there. Energy prices just rose up by 45 good percent. One thing that I'm sure this question has been asked severally, um, your people are complaining that you travel too much. They want to know how that has benefited them. Those are what you call state visits, a particular category of visits that you need to do as a new head of state. Nobody they, they, nobody's going to get up and come to you as a new boy block, uh, as, a, as a new boy on the block and come and know you have to go out. I had to go to Harvard when I was invited. That is an honor. I had to go to MIT. That is an honor. You won't get that if you are a corrupt government, if you are not investing in your people, which the others didn't get. And that's why they are jealous about my travels. That is the only reason. So you think I they are jealous about your travels? Correct. Hmm. That's the Sierra Leonean President Julius Mada Bill there speaking to the BBC's Thomas Nadi.